The dirty secret with working in IT is that our accounts are the number one targets for hackers to, uh, to get into an organization. If they can choose between targeting an admin account and a standard user account, the hacker is going to choose to target an admin account. In every internal pen test that I've, uh, you know, been the IT admin of having to sit there and wait for uh, that pen tester to come in, those pen testers are really just hunting for my admin accounts. And they're going to look and find every time I've made a mistake in my organization and had, you know, access to it. Because of this, it's really important that we put security precautions in place to protect our admin accounts um, and really secure our environments. Hi everybody, I'm Doug Baker and this is Just Do The Basics, Securing Your Office 365. Uh, today I'm gonna talk to you about things that we can do to protect our admin accounts. So let's get into it and let's look at how we can secure our admin accounts. So there's two controls that I really wanna talk about of ways that we should set up to protect ourselves from these admin accounts and the compromise and the hack attempts that's going on with admin accounts. The first one is going to be to separate your standard user account from your admin account. And this has been a long time best practice with Microsoft has recommended and very industry, you know, very, very standard in the org industry. And so um, if, if you're not familiar with it, one of the original ways that Microsoft recommended this was the Active Directory tier model, which was taking a uh, your admin accounts and separating them into separate identities. So you would always have a separate user account and admin account. However, the Active Directory tier model put more structure involved with that. So tier zero would be like domain admins. And so the idea is for all of your domain admin functions, you would always use this domain admin tier and separate them out. For your tier one things like server administration, you know, things of that nature, you would use a separate account for that. For tier two, you would use, or tier two would be the, you know, uh, workstations and things of that nature. And so if you were logging into your domain controllers, you would use your tier zero account. If you were logging in to fix a problem with the workstation, you would use, you know, that tier two account. And then finally, of course, for checking emails, you know, researching uh, issues, you would use your standard user account. And that was a very common attack, uh, common set of policies. It wasn't always practical for every organization, right? To have four accounts for every user, it can be difficult. So I'm gonna recommend if you're not doing anything, at least separate your admin function and your standard user function. Now, I still really like the Active Directory tier model, and that's a great way to secure your organization and it adds a, a ton of benefit. The primary reason is because, again, uh, a hacker is trying to compromise your environment. And if you're really adhering to the tier model, it really prevents a you know, compromise in your organization. This is a great uh, set of slides that Microsoft produced a while ago. And I really wish I could find and remember where I got this from, but I just love this explanation of kind of why the tier model was so important. I think this was from a Defender for Identity product uh, original video. But what's happening in a lot of organizations is, again, your IT admin accounts are under attack. They really are looking at compromising you as a as an organization and so you know a, a breach will happen someone's account will get infected it'll be a, a malware on your device and that hacker is going to try to laterally shift and they're really searching for credentials in your different tiers right and so the tier model is great because if you are really adhering to it the hacker can compromise this entire tier and they can't really move up into the other tiers Unfortunately, you know, that's not really what happens most of the time. Most of the time, us as admins usually break it. We'll use either, you know, one standard user account or and one admin account. And so what happens a lot of times is that as that hacker moves laterally, they eventually find a way to get to one of those tier zero accounts and that'll compromise the entire organization. And so I highly recommend considering the tier uh, model um, you know, for, for better, you know, protection of your organization, but this is just do the basics. So at the very minimum, we highly recommend separating out admin and your standard user, because that's, that's the basic security control that you should really be taking advantage of. When you add cloud to this mix, it actually becomes more interesting, right? This same compromise actually leads to not just a compromise of active directory, but it, if you're using these standard user accounts in your cloud, 
it can actually lead to a compromise of your full cloud environment. And so because of that, Microsoft has really changed the tier model. They are actually moving instead to the enterprise access model, which is a great uh, you know, setup model that really makes sense when you add in cloud. And this brings us to point number two of, of what we think you should do in your, or what I think you should do in your organization, which is gonna be cloud gap your admin accounts. We talked about that tier model where again, if Active Directory, you know, they're hunting for those admin accounts, um, if your admin account on-prem gets compromised, your cloud, and you're using that for your cloud administration, and that on-prem gets compromised, your cloud gets compromised as well. And that's what's happening in a lot of uh, organizations now is an on-prem Active Directory compromise leads to a cattle compromise. And so the simple way to prevent that and secure that is to cloud gap your admin. Instead of using the tier model and just saying, hey, these are all separate tiers and treating the domain as its own tier, we're really switching to that enterprise access model of saying, we're gonna separate the cloud interface and this interface. For you in your Office 365 environment, what that really means is you're gonna create a cloud only user account and give that account all the administration rights. Everything for Office 365 that has admin rights should now begin to be authored in Office 365. And that's gonna be the best way to secure your organization from your on-prem compromises. This is the, a good slide. Microsoft, or, uh, Alex Weinert wrote a great article about securing your organization from it. And they go into a lot of different you know, controls that you can put in place. And I highly recommend you review that. But the simple, is, the simple answer is with this is cloud gap your admin accounts, separate separate admin accounts from on-prem. All right, so just to recap, the, the basic controls, the M365 security basics that we would think you should put in place are, are two things. One, separate accounts for your user account and your admin accounts. PIM is not enough. I know a lot of people really like using PIM. Don't think it's enough op, uh, to, to secure your account. So you want separate accounts for your users and your admins, right? Separate those two accounts for your, for your IT folks out, okay? The second control that we really think you should definitely do is for those admin accounts, author them in the cloud. Cloud gap them from your on-prem Active Directory. Don't have them sync up and have a domain account compromise lead to a cloud account compromised. So that's it. I hope this helps someone out there. I hope this makes sense uh, as an access model. Uh, and some controls that you can put in place to help secure your environment. If you have questions, of course, please reach out in the chat uh, and take care.